cool. So, um, Patience Day has been happening all over the world, like in different forms, in different in different ways and stuff like that. I always say that um, even before we had standardized ways of, like, you know, organizing pensions, pensions had already been in ex- existence. So if you look at the very, very old people, like our grandfathers, our great-grandfathers and stuff like that, they had very crude ways of making sure that when they go on retirement or they reach an age where they can't actively work anymore, they have a source of income. One of the very crude ways that they used to use was um, having a lot of kids. So you give birth to a lot of children mm-hmm. in the hope that one of them will will either be sensible enough to take care of you when mm-hmm. you can't work anymore, or at least will help you on your farm in order for you to be able to generate wealth. Um, before what we have as SNIT right now, I think SNIT was instituted somewhere in 1972. My, my colleagues from SNIT can correct me if I'm wrong. But before that, even the colonial masters, during the era of the colonial masters, there were very um, small ways in which people managed or organized pensions. So, for instance, there were private organizations like teachers at the time who had some form of pensions. There was a, a very primitive one as well where um, if somebody was working for the state or for the colonial masters and they had any sort of injury, they could also be paid a certain pension. So these ones were all organized in the past. Then SNIT came into being. And then when SNIT came into being, they used to manage our pensions mainly as a providence fund. So when I say a providence fund, is like um, a scheme where we are saving into or we are putting money into. And then as and when necessary, then we, we, we take out money to give to any one person or group of people who need it. Then subsequently, I think SNIT was transformed into more of a social intervention. So they started doing proper social security. And again, I, I'm saying it's based on what I've read. So my, my colleagues from SNIT can correct me if I'm wrong, but it started... Oh, wow more of you know um the whole social intervention thing um and i think this began somewhere in 1991 then in 2008 we had a new pension scheme which is the pensions act 766 sorry a new pensions law which is the pensions act 766 2008 this law was then implemented in 2010 what this law pretty much sought to do was to take some of the responsibility of snit because i mean let's face it snit has been doing a yeoman's job managing our pensions from time from from the 70s down till now and so the some of the burden was taken off snit and then pensions was pretty much split into three tiers tier one tier two and tier three with snit managing the first tier and then corporate trustees like us, like Old Mutual Pensions Trust, managing the second and the third tiers. So pretty much that is the overview of pensions as of today. I'm sure as we go on, maybe we can get into the nitty gritties of all the deductions and things like that. And then if there are any questions. And then if my colleagues also have something to add, I'm sure they can add yeah. one as well. Mm-hmm. Akusha, please come in then. Jeff would, would, would wrap that on. Yes. I think I need to change my username to my uh like you know that's fine like he said initially when it started it was the problem fund when you by the time you turn 60 we bulk everything and then pay it to you once and then there's nothing after that so you get to do whatever it is that you intend to do with it and then in july 1991 they thought it was that why don't we make it a monthly remuneration so every month we give you money to take care of yourself and honestly speaking the purpose of pension is to maintain your lifestyle is to maintain whatever it is that you were getting when you were working. So it's to sort of help keep you, keep body and soul together. So from July 1991 to um, 2008, before they decided that July 1991 started the proper pension. Then in 2008, like he said, they took part of the responsibility from us. And then they amended it a bit somewhere in 2014 to include workers in Ghana who are not Ghanaians. But that is a whole other thing that we get into. So basically, that's the general overview of SNIT. And um, I don't know if I can do the the breakdown, the current breakdown as we have it. No, I think let's just probably um, pause on that. Um, we want to come that we'll, we'll just break it down. Let's um, Jeff okay. also give a little bit. Jeff, if you want to add up. 
Yes, um, thank you. So just to add up to what they have said, yes. So exactly. Um, so per the new act, yeah, um, SNIT is, sorry, pension, the pension scheme is just a means to, like um, Akusia said earlier, to replace the income wow. we're using. So in a way, in a way, pension acts like insurance, in a way, in terms of you contribute um, regularly into a pool, and then when you have a claim in terms of probably you are going on retirement or you die, then uh, funds can be made available from um, that pool to um, replace the income you've lost or to compensate your loved ones. Okay, thank you. Um, I just added um, Odrowa. She works with the NPRE. That's the National Pensions Regulatory Authority. Okay. So she could also give us some perspective uh, as well. Um. I've seen a couple of people request for the mic. So just wait, um, unless probably you want to, um, you, you work with the regulator, please just DM me and I'll probably add you. We'll get to question time, then then you could, you could ask your question. Um, Dominic, I don't know if you have anything to add or we'll probably move to the breakdown. I think we should move to the breakdown. Okay. That's pretty much. Okay, sure. Akusa, please come in with the breakdown. Okay, so with the breakdown,